Good morning, everyone. It is day four of me preparing for general conference this Saturday, and it is currently September 28th. Today, I decided that I was going to study Accessing God's Power Through Covenants by Elder Dale G. Renland from last April's general conference. And I actually chose this one because I personally am trying to learn more about covenants, specifically endowments and the temple overall, because I plan to get my endowments sometime early next year. So this one, just the title, Accessing God's Power Through Covenants, kind of stood out to me. So he says, It is not natural for us to be humble, meek, or willing to submit our wills to God. Yet, only by doing so can we be transformed, return to live in the presence of God, and achieve our eternal destiny. And then he quotes Russell M. Nelson, who said, Each person who makes covenants in baptismal fonts and in temples and keeps them has increased access to the power of Jesus Christ to lift us above the poles of this fallen world. Then he goes on kind of to talk more about the covenant path and what it is. So I'm going to describe that a little bit. He says, a covenant path is a pledge we should prepare for, clearly understand, and absolutely honor. The term covenant path refers to a series of covenants whereby we come to Christ and connect to him. The path begins with faith in Jesus Christ, repentance, followed by baptism, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some of you may recognize that. That's the fourth article of faith. <laughs> and then I wrote down some notes here. At baptism, the covenant that we make is to keep the commandments and take upon ourselves the name of Christ. That meaning we be a representative of him. We say what he would say. We do what he would do. We act how he would act. We take upon his name. Because when you think of the name Jesus Christ, you think of somebody who is loving and kind and righteous and obedient and just plain good. And we want to be like that. So that's what that means. And when we receive our temple endowments, we covenant to strive to keep the commandments, to repent with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, to live the gospel of Jesus Christ, to live the law of chastity, and to dedicate ourselves and everything the Lord blesses us with to build up his church. And I really like that idea. I don't know much about endowments specifically. So this specific thing that he said when talking about endowments was actually really meaningful to me to be able to learn that. Specifically that last part, to dedicate ourselves and everything the Lord blesses us with to build up his church. I've been pondering recently on all the gifts and talents that Heavenly Father has blessed me with and the things that I can do with them and how I could use them in the future to help build up his church. Even if not now, even if I just prepare for it for the future. But maybe I could also do it now, which is also why I'm doing this. <laughs> and I feel like that's something that we can all ponder on. What are we good at? What has Heavenly Father blessed us with and how can we use it to help bring others to the truth and help bring them closer to Heavenly Father and to Jesus Christ. And then at the end here it says, when we keep our covenants, we received an increased capacity to fulfill our purposes in mortality. The doctrine associated with these covenants eases our way and provides hope, comfort, and peace. And I love this as well because I have a testimony that Heavenly Father has a plan specifically laid out for each of us, but it's more than just a plan. It's a mission. Even if you don't plan on serving a full-time mission or becoming a full-time missionary and you don't wear the badge, there is still a mission that Heavenly Father has for you. As members of the church, Heavenly Father wants us to reach other people. He wants us to bring others together and he wants us to gather Israel. And that is our mission. When we keep our covenants, again, as it says here, we receive an increased capacity to fulfill our purposes in mortality, which is this, which is to gather Israel and to serve others and to bring others unto the fold. I'm gonna read the last two paragraphs of the talk here because I didn't write them down because it was just so much, but I really love these. He says it perfectly. As you walk the covenant path from baptism to the temple and throughout life, I promise you power to go against the natural worldly flow, power to learn, power to repent and be sanctified, and power to find hope, comfort, and even joy as you face life's challenges. I promise you and your family protection against the influence of the adversary 
especially when you make the temple a major focus in your life. As you come to Christ and are connected to Him and our Heavenly Father by covenant, something seemingly unnatural happens. You are transformed and become perfected in Jesus Christ. You become a covenant child of God and an inheritor in His kingdom. I can imagine Him saying to you, Thou art my dear child, in whom I delight. Welcome home. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, he says it so beautifully. Um, and, I've been having promptings, so many promptings recently that I need to make the temple a priority. And, I believe that is something we can all strive to do, is to make the temple a priority. And to keep our covenants and help serve him. Because this world can be so crazy. But when we trust in Him, and when we keep those covenants, when we endure to the end, it will all be worth it. When we are face to face with our grand creator, our Father, who loves us unconditionally despite everything that we've done. And He says to us, welcome home. Thou good and faithful servant. I hope that this has helped somebody. It has definitely helped me. <laughs> um, and I bear testimony that these things are true. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.